yeah looking back I think I've come a long way since my Lima days and, and before that as well um, and to where I am now I think I'm really grateful of, of the post that I've got and, and where I where I live and what I'm involved with yeah you feel privileged really to be here and being on the boat and suddenly a, a whale will come up next to you and you just think wow this is what I call work <laughs> and I'm just updating our sightings board uh, with the most recent sighting that's come through via our website of eight bottlenose dolphins. It's quite a diverse job. It's great having the opportunity to dip into the sightings and strandings or the work on the boat. We're on board Silurian, the Trust's research vessel, and we're between trips at the moment. The boat is integral really to, to the work that we do. It's our platform to collect visual and acoustic data. We're the only organisation in the UK that's studying cetaceans at this level. Probably the first piece of advice I'd give somebody starting out now would be to keep going. Quite a few people along the way said to me, oh, maybe it's time to call it quits and go and get a job in a lab or something and, and just ac accept that those you know, the, the cream of the crop, the best jobs are the ones that just don't come to the normal people. But if I'd taken their advice and stopped, then I wouldn't be sitting here today. I'd say focusing in on a specialism maybe comes a bit later. Um, I was always of the opinion that if you kept things quite broad to start off with, then you were keeping your options open. And it was meaning that by focusing on things like transferable skills and basic knowledge, you could then build your specialism depending on what opportunities came up at the time. And that's certainly what I did. Um, still even more specialisms within my field that, you know, I could look into now. Voices, apparently, one million. Oh, wow. Love I think Lima really changed my perspective on, on what, what was out there for me, what was available. Um, I was following quite an academic route beforehand. Um, I was at uni and I'd done an undergraduate degree and I'd also finished a master's just before I started Lima. Um, so I was very much gearing towards actually doing a PhD. I'd started looking into that and Lima really opened my eyes to the fact that you can still be involved in the conservation environmental um, sector but not necessarily be academic. And I found that my strengths really were in communicating with people and working with people. And that was what I was good at and what I loved doing. If the weather's kinder, we can head round. The skills that Lima helped me to develop were very much the sort of networking and collaborative side of working. So not just sitting on your own and, and staying focused on one idea that actually by talking things through and by involving other people that you quite often find novel solutions that maybe you hadn't even realised. I guess Lima's kind of like getting a driving licence that you, you're given the, the piece of paper but the training itself equips you to, to be able to do the job um, but it's all the experience that you then gain by being employed and getting that first job after you've, after you've finished your training post um, to really sort of flourish. I'm so grateful to, to the experience I had through Lima. It was a complete sort of mind shift for me um, from academia to, to more practical, um, community-based approach. And I think certainly where I am now, that, that model fits so much better.